can be uh, it's some qiraat actually recited as following la yumbadanna now what did you hear different la yumbadanna la yumbadanna it made it longer right that alif made it appear two meaning huwa wa maluhu him and his money will be thrown you loved it so much go live with it you never wanted to let go of it right okay you won't let go of it ever you can go get crushed with it together <laughs> subhanallah huwa wa maluhu now we come to the next ayah. الَّذِي جَمَعَ مَالًا وَعَدَّدَهُ The first thing to explore is what's the connection between these two things. What's the connection between this attribute of heart being hurtful to other people and the second one is de- dedicated to one concept. Shallow translation, the one who gathered wealth and counted it. That's the shallow translation. So what's the connection between the one who's always critical of people and the one who's gathering wealth? When the one who's always gathering wealth doesn't give any of it, so gets criticized by the people as being greedy. And he doesn't like being criticized. And the best defense is offense. Right? So before he can get he can get to hear from someone, you should be more charitable, you should worry about, there are other things to worry about in life than money. Before he gets to hear that criticism, what does he constantly do? Constantly describing others' flaws. Engaged in being humaza or lumaza. Or both rather. Even, even worse, being engaged in both. Covering his own flaw of being indulged in his own wealth. Or her own wealth. This is the first thing. The other thing here is, remember I said, when a person doesn't have a higher goal in life, they get lost in trivial pursuits? Well, one trivial pursuit was the first ayah, finding flaws in people. What's the other trivial pursuit? Gathering wealth and constantly, constantly making plans for the future. And these people, they become so narrow-minded, when you start worrying about your deen and less about saving your money, you know what they say to you? Think about your future. Right? And the, the ironic thing is, you are thinking about your future. <laughs> They're the ones who are not thinking about your future. And they're saying, think long term. And guess what? The irony is, they're the ones thinking short term. You know, what are you going to do in the next 10 years? Dude, what are we going to do for the next thousand years in our grave? What's going to happen after we get out? That's long term thinking. <laughs> this isn't long term thinking. But their minds get wrapped around this, this idea and this becomes their whole world view. So, and by the way, fil hutama, by using the word fi, يَقْتَضِي أَنَّهُ مَوْضِعٌ لَهُ قَعْ عَمِيقٌ جِدًّا كَالْبِئْرِ By using the word fee, he will be thrown in it. It implies that this is a place that is very, very deep. That he will be thrown way down in, in, a, in a deep ditch. لَيُنْبَذَنَّ بِضَمِّ الذَّال It's also been recited لَيُنْبَذُنَّ So there are three recitations. لَيُنْبَذَنَّ لَيُنْبَذَنَّ And then لَيُنْبَذُنَّ هُوَ وَأَنْصَارُهُ Him and the people who helped him become this way. So the three interpretations, either he himself, him and his wealth, and then him and his entire posse, his entire social circle. وَسُمِّيَتْ النَّارْ هَا هُنَا بِالْحُطَمَةِ And the fire was called hutama here. لِأَنَّهَا تَحْتِمَ الْعِظَامِ Because it crushes the bones. حَتَّى تَصِلَ إِلَى الْقُلُوبِ Until it reaches the hearts. It's called hutama because it crushes bones and reaches to the hearts. How do we know it reaches the hearts? إِنَّهَا تَطَّلِعُ عَلَى الْأَفْئِدَةِ that, That's coming. But al muqada implies it remains lit. It stays that way, it doesn't go down. You know, if, if you know anything about lighting a fire, what happens eventually? It dies out. But by using muqada, Allah made it an endless fire, subhanAllah. Allati tattali'u ala al afida. The one that rises up against or makes its way, climbs painstakingly. Tala'a in Arabic is used for the rising of the sun, which is a smooth rising. But ittala'a is used for climbing a mountain, which is a painful step by step. This fire is taking one step inside you, then the next step, then it grabs onto something and makes its way like a, a climber does. Ittala'a. Allati tattali'u also implies it does so over and over again. If it's, it was the past tense, ittala'at, then it would have happened in one shot. Tattali'u, it does so, then goes back, then does so again, then goes back and does so again. This, con- this istimrar fil fi'l, right? This continuity in the act. So, the, and by the way, why the hearts? Because the greed, the humaza, the lumaza, the assumption that mal will last forever. Where did all of these crimes take place originally? In the heart. The heart that was overwhelmed against someone else or against their own greed, which wasn't even qalb, it was fuad. And now that the heart is being burned, it's literally inflamed. So we don't use qalb, we use fuad here. Because fu'ad implies a heart that is engulfed in flames. Lahmun fa'id means a, p- a piece of flesh that is surrounded by fire. That's what it literally means. And now it's not even fu'ad figuratively, which it is. It's also fu'ad literally. 
So Allah says, on the day of judgment, nothing will benefit him. مِلْ الْأَرْضِ ذَهَبًا وَلَوْ افْتَدَى بِهِ Even if he offers the weight of the entire planet earth in gold and tried to exchange that for his own salvation, gave that away, it wouldn't, it wouldn't benefit him. So what is he so proud of? It doesn't make any sense. And يَكُونَ murad. It can also mean that the meaning here is مِنْهُ التَّعْظِيمِ أَيْ مَالٌ مَالًا بَلَغَ فِي الْخَبْثِ وَالْفَسَادِ أَقْصَ النِّهَيَاتِ Also means that الذي, this, this uh, uh, them of it illustrates that he went by and, and tried to gather wealth, whether those means be filthy or corrupt. Now compare this to the Muslim mind. The Muslim mind is, you know, you have an old man who's already got a foot in the grave and he's planting a seed in the ground for a tree to grow. And you ask him, you're not going to be, you're not going to live long enough for this tree to grow. And he says, well, it will give somebody shade one day, sadaqa jariya for me. This is the mind of the Muslim, right? It's, that's what it's supposed to be. We think about how the future will be benefited. Not, you know, live, eat, sleep, drink, and die. That's it, you know. This is the, this is the, the reversal of thought. And that's really, when we read this stuff, we shouldn't just think about what's happening, you know, a millennium and a half ago. This is, these are realities of our time. These are, these are serious problems of our time. And unfortunately, just because we're Muslim, doesn't mean that we haven't been engrossed in the deepest depths of the black greed of capitalism. We ourselves have become really nasty capitalists ourselves. And we don't think about the greater good and serving society and building the kinds of institutions, right? We've become people of Allah Jama'a Malan wa Abdullah. May Allah protect us from it and get us out of this mess. So the first ayah is dedicated towards his attitude against others, and the second is his occupation for himself. What is he occupied with himself? Interestingly, know that what is expected of the human being is the exact opposite. You are supposed to be the best to others. And you're supposed to not keep wealth for yourself, but be giving. What is expected of you is the exact opposite of the behavior being described. So, عدده, to count and place, to count over and over again, to, to keep track of the count. And it can, be also be, it can also be, like I said, associated with preparation, preparing for future need. That's a deep question to ask. When you ask, you know, why do you want money to a child? They say, I don't know. I might want something later. <laughs> right? But ask yourself the difficult question, why does humanity run after wealth? If the food is on the plate today, you stop worrying about today, you start worrying about tomorrow. In other words, akhlada doesn't just mean eternal life, it means that which will continue to sustain him endlessly. In other words, he's worried that if he doesn't have savings, he, will, he or she will cease to exist. You know people become suicidal when, there's, when their stock account you know, they drops? Right, their investment accounts went to zero and they became suicidal because they associated surviving with savings. Not with food they have right now, but the food they were saving for tomorrow. This is part of the meaning of akhlada. He doesn't just think he'll live forever, but he thinks that his future needs, this is from ikhlad, from khulud, his future needs are taken care of because he or she has savings, because they have these savings. So, this, uh, and, and by the way, this, this is tied to the idea of building monuments. You know, people, they want to be known for things. And one of the things people get known for is wealth. And, you know, at, at the end of people's lives, if they don't believe in an afterlife, they don't give it in sadaqah, they give in their own form of sadaqah. They'll donate to a charity or to a hospital, to a university, so a monument will be named after them. Right? So this is the only thing of them that will live on. So they're making their wealth a means by them to which, by, by means of which they can live on through these empty monuments, this rock and metal or whatever is used to make those monuments. This concept is also dis, uh, talked about in the Quran. When the nation of Hud is mentioned, Allah Azza wa Jalla says, وَتَتَّخِذُونَ مَصَانِعَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَخْلُدُونَ تَخْلُدُونَ You make statues so you can live forever? What does that have to do with living forever? No, their name, their legacy, their memory will live forever. Is this your reason for building these unnecessary monuments? His quest, his desire for eternity, for living eternally. Allah put that desire inside the human being. If that desire is not channeled towards seeking Jannah, it will be channeled towards getting your wealth and building monuments. And that's what will channel. But it is, the desire is there. Like Allah put the desire inside us to, to appreciate beautiful things. And if you don't appreciate the beautiful recitation of Qur'an, you will become obsessed with music. The desire is there, but it's just got, it's gonna get channeled. It's gonna go in one direction or the other, you understand? So that's what we're learning here. 
So the people who don't, and by the way, this is the comment of one of my teachers, Dr. Sarah Ahmed, he said about this, uh, this surah, he said that there are two, temp two temptations of dunya. It's money and children usually that are talked about in the Quran. Right? At-takathur fil amwali wal awlad. Obviously this surah is, a, is talking which one? Mal. Mal, not awlad. And he made a comment about that, just his own observation. He said, in my own life I have noticed the people who don't have children, they become even more obsessed with wealth. If they don't have kids, then you, if you have kids, you have two concerns. But if you have, don't have kids, you become overly concerned with wealth and counting money. And if you tell people who don't have kids who become overindulged in wealth, why don't you have kids? What's the number one reason they give you? <laughs> wealth. I don't know if you can afford it. I don't know if, you know, we have enough for ourselves. We don't know if we have enough for a child. It might cramp our style or our, you know, our, our future plans, etc. So now in tafsir of this, يَحْسَبُ أَنَّ مَا لَهُ أَخْلَدَ طَوَّلَ الْمَالُ أَمْ لَهُ The wealth will increase his false hopes. وَمَنَّاهُ الْأَمَانِيَ الْبَعِيدَةِ And it will give him wishful thoughts or fortify his wishful thoughts that are far away. حَتَّى أَصْبَحَ لِفَرْطِ غَفْلَتِهِ وَطُولِ أَمْرِهِ Until it becomes a means by which he gets deeper and deeper into his heedlessness and extends his false hopes. يَحْسَبُ أَنَّ مَا لَهُ تَرَكَهُ خَالِدًا He assumes his wealth will leave him remaining فِي الدُّنْيَا لَا يَمُوتِ In this world as though he won't die. 